Namaskaram Sadhguru. In this age of Kali Yuga, how would you introduce spirituality into corporate India? Because unfortunately I keep hearing this uh, in the… in that segment of people, there's a corporate world. So, well, this is a very important thing that we don't break the world into many pieces which we have already done in the name of race, religion, nationality, communities, caste, creed, now corporate world. Uh, this is also not new, class has always been there. Either money or lack of money has united people. Moneyed people gather in one place, no money people gather in another place. So, uh, that is what probably they're referring to as a world. Well, uh, different religions are claiming it is their world, you know. Now, classes are claiming their world. I don't know what else will claim. <laughs> Now there is a world. If you were a part of it, you would be a great contribution. But unfortunately, if you are not a part of it, you become exclusive. Exclusivity invariably brings exploitative tendencies in everybody. So, every economic system that you create, you talk about communism, you talk about socialism, you talk about capitalism. Every system has become exploitative at certain point of success. Either exploiting the very people that they are supposed to take care of, or exploiting somebody else who is not in the communist world or the socialist world or the capitalist world. Now, how to introduce spirituality to these people? Well, these people have found material success. That means, in many ways, a few things, not everything about their life, a few things, they've gotten logically correct. So, uh, it's very important that if spiritual process has to enter corporate world. It has to be logically correct. How to make a dimension which is nothing to do with the limitations of logic, logically correct, that's a challenge. Because logic is based on the principle of two. There must be this and that, then there is logic. There must be high and low, then there is logic. There must be you and me, then there is logic. Now you're talking about a dimension where there's only one number, either one or zero. In many ways, spirituality is a zero-sum game because it's one big hole. Who is here to cut this? It is not your birthday cake to cut it into many pieces and serve it to people. It can't be done like that. Well, you're trying to do that in your mind. For that, there is inevitable suffering that everybody is going through. So, corporate world is also just one more piece of the cake maybe the creamier part of the cake, especially because there is more cream on their cake or their piece of the cake, they are little more, you know. Generally, at least the men in the corporate world are little noosed up. Because of that, even the breath is constipated, because of that, very limited logic. First of all, 
human logic is a very limited process. Most human beings have not understood or grasped the basis of our logic and the limitations of our logic. This is why they're going on elogizing silly little things that they say. Well, uh, for this there is Indian masala. You know, I haven't eaten anything. If you talk Indian masala, my mouth will water. <laughs> because not the kind that uh, Usha is serving or somebody else is serving in this kitchen. I have my masala, if you eat it, you will become my slave. Yes, by the tongue, your tongue will hang out and you'll be pointing at me all the time. Yes. <laughs> so, Indian masala is there, with which we can say most illogical dimension of life in a logical way. It's taken millennia of observation of human mind and the basis of human logic that for example, in an engineering program, all of you, many of you have gone through this. Uh, you do what you want, find one logical hole in it. You cannot, but we are saying the most illogical things. Because life is not contained in logic, life contains logic as a part of itself. But you cannot contain whole life into the logical process that happens in your mind. This is the big investment that the Western cultures have done, that they've invested too heavily in their own logic. They believe their logic will take them to the ultimate. No, for the first time, the physicists in the world, the top physicists in the world are admitting, we shall never know because we don't have instruments to know. This is a clear admission that human logic cannot go beyond a certain point. It has its limitations, but this limited logic, we hash it up with Indian masala and use it to express the most illogical dimensions of life. <laughs> I must tell you this. <laughs> At one time when uh, this is uh, in mid-90s, when uh, Isha as a movement in southern India was growing exponentially, <laughs> so uh, for the local people in Tamil Nadu, I'm somebody who landed up from somewhere, who doesn't know a word of Tamil, but bullying them with their own language, or saying all kinds of words which don't belong to Tamil but conveying what I want to convey. Even today I'm managing Tamil language with just thirty-three words of vocabulary. <laughs> then it was just eleven. <laughs> so saying all kinds of things but it was logically correct. So they were taken by it and it was just growing. The state government got little nervous, who is this guy? He just anywhere he goes, thousands of people gathering, what's happening? Is he going to start a new political party? Is he going to contest elections? All these kind of things came up. So it seems they sent some intelligence officers to our programs <laughs> Maybe here also, I don't know if you're FBI <laughs> <laughs> so they came and they did uh, the inner engineering program, then unfortunately they got into the Bhava Spandana program <laughs> and the horror of horrors, they got into the Samyama program <laughs> and then they submitted a report. After almost two years after this report was submitted, we found some access to the report because we didn't even know such a thing had happened. <laughs> so these guys who reported, to put it in a brief form, they said, this first program is very good. <laughs> you know what they mean. What they mean is it's logically correct. Second program is little crazy, but all right. Third program, this must be banned. 
because without doing anything, they're just sitting there and going crazy. <laughs> Not doing anything, at least in the second program, they were doing something to go crazy. In the third program, they're doing nothing and they're going crazy, this must be banned. So, <laughs> when I came to know of this, I thought this is a classic case of observation. It has to be logically correct. Tell me, is your existence logically correct? In the middle of nowhere, you don't know where this cosmos begins, where it ends, in the middle of nowhere, you're sitting on a little mud ball called earth. It's just a tiny little mud ball. And uh, thinking up all kinds of things sitting here, and whoever comes here, we call them an alien, aliens have come. <laughs> we are a microscopic, super microscopic existence, but any other life is alien to us. So this is our logic. It's absolutely illog illogical, your very existence is illogical. There's simply no logic to your existence. We are trying to find meanings, no meaning. So, of course, with the corporate people, you have to say, uh, you will be peaceful because they are never peaceful. And they're telling me about hundred and twenty thousand corporate leaders or in the executive uh, group of people, managers and executives in United States are dying much earlier than they should. And about hundred and eighty billion dollars is being spent on just corporate executive help in this country. Why are they so sick? It's very natural. When you have a world of your own, you will be sick, I want you to understand. We not only have a world of our own, we also have separate heavens. You should see on the golf courses, people keep on arguing, there is a golfer's heaven. Golfers go to a different heaven <laughs> where it's full of golf courses. <laughs> Sex maniacs go to another place, foodies go to another place. <laughs> separate heavens are also there, just like the separate worlds that we have created. So, corporate world, whether in India or elsewhere, they want something which is logically correct, but still takes them ahead. Well, you know we got the solution in our engineering, hundred percent logically correct, pick a hole in it, let me see, you cannot, because it's so logically perfect. <laughs> it's like Indian masala. If you taste all the ingredients separately and the final product, the final product doesn't resemble anything that you have put into it. So, it's like I'm calling it Indian masala because in the end it works. And that's all that matters <laughs>